Chapter 13 is chance. And we're going to use the words probability and chance interchangeably. And we're going to use all this probability theory to provide the foundation for everything that we do in our statistics class. Okay, so to start with, probability was developed to solve gambling problems. A lot of the problems we're going to talk about in this class will involve games of chance. Okay, and your chance can be written as a percentage, a fraction, or a decimal. Okay, and either one will be fine for everything we do in this class. You can always choose what you want to do for each problem. So let's look at a couple. So for to start off with the percentage, the chance that a coin lands heads is 50%. Now 50%, that would also be the same as 0.5 or 1 half. So any of those would be acceptable. For a fraction, the chance that a die lands on a 6 is 1 a 6. Or, I could change that to a decimal, a 0.1666. Or, I could change it to a percentage of 16.66%. And the chance that a die lands on an odd number is 0.5. Or, that's 1 half. Or, that's 50%. So how do we find a chance? How do we find a probability? So the chance of something happening, we're going to find it as the percentage of times that it's expected to happen when our basic process is repeated independently many times. So if we do the same thing many, many times, what percentage of times should a certain thing happen? There's some rules for our chances. Chances are always between 0% and 100%. Or if you're using fractions or decimals, it's always going to be between 0 and 1. Chances are never negative, and chances are never more than 100%. So when you do the tests and quizzes and homework, make sure you never give me an answer that's more than 100%. The chance of something happening is 100% minus the chance of it not happening. So for example, if the chance that you win is 45%, then the chance that you don't win is 100% minus 45%, which would be 55%. Or if the chance of giving no prizes is 0.25, then the chance of getting at least one prize is 1 minus 0.25, which is 0.75. And this next rule, the one that we're going to use all the time because it's very, very useful. The chance of something happening at least once is 100% minus the chance that it happens no times. And the reason why is those two things are opposites. Happening at least once is the opposite of happening no times. And whenever you have opposites, their chances have to add up to 100%. And that is called the complement rule. And just as a note that when we're drawing something at random, when you're talking about random, then all your possible outcomes have the same chance of being picked. Let's practice finding some probabilities. So we have a box that contains two red marbles and three yellow marbles. We reach in and choose one marble at random without looking. So the chance that the marble is red is what? So to calculate our probability is going to be how many of interest divided by the total. So in our case, there are two reds. We're interested in reds, and there's a total of so our answer is two-fifths. In this point, it's very natural to write this answer as a fraction. And so that's what I'd probably leave it as. But you could also change it to a decimal. So 2 divided by 5 is 0.4. Or if you times it by 100, then you get 40%. The chance that the marble is yellow would be, let's see, there's three yellows. So 3 out of 5. And I did that by just counting how many yellows there are. Next, I roll a six-sided die. So it has the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 
what is the chance that I get the number six? Well, if there's six sides, and there's only six on one side, then it's one out of six. Let's just make ourselves a note. So the die has numbers one, two, three, four, five, and six. If we don't say otherwise for this class, that's always what we're assuming is on a die. Okay, now what is the chance that I don't get the number six? So number one, get the number six. Number two, don't get the number six. Those are complements. So the probability, so I'm going to write this P for probability. We'll do that a lot throughout this class. The probability of getting a not 6 is equal to 1 minus the probability of getting a 6. Or 1 minus our probability of getting a 6, which we said was 1 6, and that leaves me with 5 6. Also, I could have figured out all the numbers that weren't 6s, so there's a 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, so there's five of them out of a total of six, so five, six. In roulette, we have 38 pockets. There's 18 red pockets, 18 black pockets, and two green pockets. The red pockets have odd numbers, black ones have even numbers, and the green pockets have the number zero and zero, zero. If you bet on a number, you win if that number shows up, otherwise you lose. If you bet on red, you win if a red number shows up, otherwise you lose, etc. So if you bet on a number seven, your chance of winning is. Let's see. First of all, there are 38 pockets, but only one seven. So our chance of winning is one out of 38, because there's only one way we can win. Because there's only one seven. If you bet on red, your chance of winning is what? Okay, how many reds do we have? We have 18 reds out of a total of 38. Now this is a fraction. If you want, you can simplify this fraction. There's no reason that you really need to, but you can. So you could divide top and bottom by 2. So this would be 9 out of 19. Or I can do 18 divided by 38 and get a decimal of 0.473. Or I can times that by 100% to get 47.3%. If we bet on green, our chance of winning is, let's see, there's only two green pockets, so 2 out of 38. Or I could change it to a decimal, so 0 0.0526. Or I could change it to percent, so 5.26%. Number four says, what is the chance of getting a seven or a black number? Okay, now keep in mind here that seven is red. So that actually means that there's one seven. And then there's 18 blacks. And so we want a seven or a black number, so how many ways are there to get what we want? There's 19 out of a total of 38. Next, I toss a coin two times. The possible outcomes are head, 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 tail, tail, head, head, tail. Number one, what is the chance that it lands head both times? First of all, I'm tossing my coin two times, and these are my possible outcomes. First, all four of these options are equally likely. The reason why is that to start with, if it's a fair coin, then head or tail the first time is equally likely, and head or tail is equally likely the second time. So in the end, all four options are equally likely. So when I say HH, that means we got head and then head. HT means we got head then tail, tail then head. Oh, 
and this needs to be fixed. This should be tail, then tail. So what is the chance that it lands heads both times? So that's asking, what is the probability that we get a head and then a head? Well, if we have four outcomes and they're all equally likely, there's only one head head, so that would be one fourth. For number two, what's the chance that we get at least one H? So I could do this the direct way, and I could look at my possible outcomes and say, which ones have at least one H? Well, head, head, that has at least one H. And head, tail, that has at least one H, so I need to get a head, head, or a head, tail, or a tail, head. Any of those outcomes will work. And there's three of those that give me what I want out of a total of four. I could do it that way. Or I could use the complement rule and actually make it a little bit easier. So I could say, what's the probability of at least one head? At least one head, that's the opposite or the complement of no heads. So I could say, what's one minus the probability of no heads? because all probabilities have to add up to either 1 or 100%, depending on if you're working with fractions or percentages. And how do you get no heads? The only way you can get no heads is if you get tails, tails. And what's the probability of getting tails, tails? It was 1 fourth. So it's 1 minus 1 fourth gives me 3 fourths. Okay, so either way, you're going to get your answer of 3 fourths. Next, we have a ticket that we're going to draw at random from box A or box B. We win one dollar if the ticket is black. Which box is better for you? So if we want to get black, let's find the probability of black for each one. So for box A, the probability of black is two out of five, or I can simplify that to 40% for a percentage. For box B, the probability of black is, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4 out of 10. Or I can change that to 40%. Notice that they're the same, and so it doesn't matter which box, because the chance of black is the same for each box, so it doesn't matter which box you draw from. Because either way, you have the same percentage, 40%, of getting a black ticket. And now we're going to talk about drawing from a box. This is something that we do a lot in this class. And so think of a box of tickets that are identical, except for they have a number written on them, or there are different colors. And the box is shaken so the tickets are thoroughly mixed, and we can reach in and choose a ticket at random. And then we might decide to reach in again and choose a second ticket. And there's two ways we can do this. First, we can do it with replacement. That means that we look at our first ticket, and then we put it back in the box and mix up our tickets before choosing the second one. Or we can do it without replacement, which means that we don't put the first ticket back. So this figure demonstrates the difference. So we want to make two draws that run from this box that has the numbers one, two, three. And suppose that our first draw is three. So here is our box. Notice that we pulled the three out. Now if we do it with replacement, then the next time I want to draw from my box, I still have the numbers one, two, three to choose from. But the second, or if I did it without replacement, then the second time I reach in and draw from the box, I only have the numbers one and two to choose from because I already drew out a three on the first time. So this brings us to what's called conditional probability. And conditional probability is any time that an event is affected by something. And one example is if we're drawing with out replacement. So to see the difference between with and without replacement, we're going to look at this box again that has red and yellow marbles. So we reach in and choose two marbles with replacement. The chance that the first marble is red is 
What? Okay. So I'm just trying to draw, reach in and draw one marble. I haven't done anything else yet. This is my first marble, so if I want it to be red, there are two red marbles out of a total of five. Now next, if we see that the first marble is red, then the chance that the second marble is red is what? Now it's very important here to note that we're drawing it with replacement. That means after I draw a marble, I put it back. So after I do the marble, I put it back. So the first one was red. Now what's the chance that the second one is red? Okay, for this one, it doesn't matter what the first marble is because we put it back. So the chance that the second one is red is still two out of five. So let's make ourselves the note that it doesn't matter that the first marble was red because we put it back before drawing the second marble. Now let's continue on to our next one. So see, if we see that the first marble is yellow, then the chance that the second marble is red is what? Well, it would still be two fists. We don't care that the first marble was yellow because we put it back before we drew our second one. And finally, the chance that the second marble is red is what? So notice that this one is written separately a little bit differently. It just says the chance of the second marble is red. So this means we don't care if the first one was red or if the first one was yellow. It doesn't matter. The chance of the second marble is red is two-fifths. And we'll talk mo a lot more about why this is. Some people have a hard time believing it. Okay, so number two you reach in and choose two marbles without replacement, without replacement. So we do not put the first marble back. So the chance that the first marble is red is going to be two fists, because I start with two red marbles and three yellows. So let's just make ourselves a note. We had two red and three yellow. Okay. So B, if we see that the first marble is red, the chance that the second marble is red is what? Okay. So now this is a lot different because we don't put the first marble back. So I pulled out a red one. How many reds are left? There's only one red left out of a total of four. So let's write down our logic. We didn't put the red marble back. So only one red marble left and only four total marbles. And so our probability would be one fourth. Let's see, if we see that the first marble is yellow, the chance that the second marble is red is going to be what? Well, if our first one is yellow, then how many reds are left? There's two reds, but only four total marbles. And D is the one that people really have a hard time believing. So D in number one is easy to believe, but D in number two is harder to believe for people. The chance that the second marble is red is what? Now when I say the chance of the second marble is red, notice I didn't tell you what the first marble was. Okay, so you have no idea what the first marble is. So on this one then you have no idea what the first marble was and so you're looking for what we call the unconditional probability or you can think of it as kind of the original probability. And so if you have no idea what the first probability or what the first marble was, then the chance of the second marble being red just goes back to our original probability of two fists. And I know this is difficult to believe. We're going to prove it on page 81 once we learn a little more probability, once we get to the point that we can.